everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. Vince, today's question comes from Elio Ribeiro over email, and he wants to know if we think that with all of the crazy amounts of superhero television that we're getting right now, and yeah, we're talking a lot of superhero TV right now, because uh, it's just it's that time of year, and there's so much of it, and we're doing all these discussion shows, uh, so obviously some of the viewers are thinking about it just as much as we are, and what uh, what he wants to know is, is it going to implode? Like, like, how long does this last? Is this going to collapse in on itself? Or are we seeing oversaturation? This is a question that we've talked about before with regards to movies. Is, 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 uh, is, is a superhero movie um, too oversaturated? I want to say we did a whole show on that a while back, quite a while back. And today we're going to talk about it with, with uh, television. We can certainly broach movies as well. Superheroes on screen, is this oversaturated? Is it going to implode in on itself? Are, we, are, are the companies simply milking it for what it's worth right now? so they can cash in on it before everybody gets sick of it. What do you think, Vince? I think that uh, up until this point, they have had a luxury where you could separate everything out. So even if there was a lot, you could still manage to go see it. You know, you go to the, the summer hits and then six movies come out, but, you know, you have uh, f between two and four months, depending on how long you consider your summer to be, for, uh, for going to see movies. And uh, then you have six movies distributed throughout there, and they're all from different companies, and they've spent a lot of money on trying to get these things done. And then uh, you go to television, and uh, you have a bunch of shows running at the same time, and they each come out weekly, and they're between 20 minutes to about an hour, and then, then I could see it imploding. And uh, I, I don't necessarily mean that, uh, that they will altogether become unsuccessful. What I think is likely to happen is that people will stop feeling obligated to watch all of it. And they will compartmentalize. They'll say, well, I'm really interested in the Avengers yeah. stuff mm -hmm. and Batman. And then there's people that'll say, well, I'm really interested in Arrow and the spinoff from there. So let's let's you know let's let's explore what we're really interested in here rather than let's watch everything they make. When you say that, it makes me feel like you're almost making uh, in, in, in argument, maybe unintentionally, for the idea that this will not happen, that it won't implode, that there's room for all of it, that as long as you're not making the same thing, this is my opinion, that as long as you're not making the same thing constantly in the old superhero formula, uh, that that like we kind of got really sick of after we made enough superhero movies that all just kind of felt like yet another guy who just happens to get powers puts on tight saves the world the end. Uh, as long as it's not all of the same formula, either that one or, or, or otherwise, <laughs> and you don't feel like all these shows are the same thing that, 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 that you're that, that, ever, that we're watching the same thing over and over again. Yeah, people aren't going to feel the need to watch all of everything just because it's superhero, um, you know, and, and, unless you're me and you just like to keep up with everything superhero. Uh, but not, for punishment. But obviously not, ever, not, not, not everybody is like that, and a lot of the more casual fans are going to come to things not because they're superhero, but because of who the characters are, mm -hmm. or because of what the premise is. I think that one of two things happens. Either we, we, we eventually get too many of these things and they do all feel the same and we don't have the kind of variety we're seeing right now. I don't feel like these shows are the same. I feel like there's a lot of a difference between Arrow and between Flash and then Gotham and then S.H.I.E.L.D. and then certainly Constantine looks like a totally different thing. Um, that Yes, they're all comic books. Yes, they share some of the same ideas. Yes, we're talking about some of the same stuff in there's a lot of... In, in all these shows, they're gonna, there's going to be talk about dual identities, or at least a lot of them. There's going to be talk about, um, about about you know keeping your personal life separate from being a superhero. There's going to be talk about secrets. There's going to be talk about um, who can you trust. But like the the notions of trusting people and keeping secrets, that's not superhero. That's TV drama, man. Like sure. that's that's just major TV drama tropes. I think what we're finding is that superhero is simply something that if you if you do it straight, fits really well with the T weekly television model and I think that so many different kinds of stories and kinds of subgenres and, and just straight up genres can be told with the superhero thing that as long as it's something that you can that, that, that you're enjoying not just because it's a dude with a with a mask yeah I don't I don't know I don't know that an implosion would necessarily I mean, happen any any time soon 
I guess I guess I'm saying I could see the possibility of uh, of it imploding, not necessarily like uh, it becoming unwelcome to the audience, but rather the people who are making this stuff look at the numbers going down and they say, "Oh, well, that means that uh, we're losing general interest." Well, really, what you're saying is that you've produced enough stuff that now you have to divide the interest because people can't watch all of this; they can't spend their entire week watching television. You're right. I think that there is an inherent flaw in your logic. Which is, it, by, by what you're saying right now, that would almost imply that everybody that is watching one is watching all of them already, and that's not happening. Oh, that's a good point. I mean, that's the thing, though, is that I hear a lot of fans say, oh, you're not watching this one? Well, what? I mean, can you spend your entire time? I mean, but that's the thing, though, is but that that's you have fans, a lot of casual right? that, viewers. Yeah, casual viewers, right? I mean, like, like, sure, a lot of us superhero comic book fans are watching all of them because, I mean, this is our golden age of TV right now, right? Like, like we've been waiting for this. Like, not only do are we getting all of these adaptations of stuff. Not only are, in my opinion, all of them pretty solid for the most part, but we're finally getting straight up dudes in costumes. We're, 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 we're finally embracing the comic book stuff. Uh, we're, we're allowing the actual costume supervillain thing to happen on screen. Um, and a lot of it, uh, w when you look at Gotham, when you look at Flash especially, my god, it, it is, is really cinematic looking. You know, you're getting... I, I watched the pilot of Flash and I said, a Flash movie could look like this. This is screen worthy. Uh, all of the effects in that show big screen worthy. I mean, it's really cool. And so, yeah, a lot of us comic book fans want to watch all of them. But, uh, that is not that, that is not transla translating across the board. So, what we're seeing is not, first of all, it isn't just the comic book fans that are watching these. Mm -hmm. And second of all, um, the, the uh, people are being choosy. You know, so even your casual fans who who can tell that, like, or or, or like just a casual audience who who uh, you know go to all the superhero movies and and go, you know, superheroes are in right now, aren't feeling this peer pressure of I have to watch everything just because it's based on a comic book or just because it's Marvel. Um, if they think that Shield is boring, they're not watching it. The numbers are reflecting that. Uh, Sh Shield is is um Shield has had the worst numbers in the last three episodes of its entire run. Um, it it did not have a good uh, uh, opening week for the second season and that episode I thought was really really spectacular and then since then the numbers have been dropping we've seen all time lows every week and so you know we're, we're people are already being choosy they're already deciding you know you know with with their with their time it's the, the what i'm saying is i think we're already in a place where the, it's not just a novelty of hey we got comic book stuff on TV it's what it is and how it's made you know and so uh, I don't think the implosion thing happens unless they're just not good or they're all the same I mean like like uh, like what, what I've been told by a lot of people because I didn't really I don't know all that much about the history of the western but what I've been told by people who really like westerns is that the western genre didn't die off because there were too many of them and people were sick of them it was that it got to a point where it was stagnant they were all kind of the same mm -hmm. and I uh, and, and I'm, I'm saying people have told me this because I can't speak to that I don't know if that's really what the case was but that's I mean that makes sense to me I yeah I feel like I, I may have watched more westerns than you have but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm an expert but uh, the, the thing about it is is that uh, you have essentially your traditional Western, which don't have mer much variation, and then you have your revisionist Western, which do, as they say, revise the genre. And uh, you can do a lot of different things with a revisionist Western, because essentially what you're saying is that we're not bound by the idea of uh, uh, your archetypes of characters anymore. So I would almost say that uh, the traditional Western is almost what you would have to be referring to when you say they died out because they became stagnant. So, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I feel like the way... Here, here's where I'm coming down on this. I feel like, and I've said this before, but I feel like a, the Western and superheroes are more like umbrellas than they are genres, in mm -hmm. a way. What I mean is they, they inherently make you want to go to certain ideas with spe specifically the idea of a hero, and I think the Western has a lot of that too. Oh, yeah. Uh, but can't you tell about any kind of story under the umbrella of superhero and under the, the umbrella of Western? Don't they both have that in common? Um, can't, can't you do a Western that is also a courtroom drama? Can't you do a Western that is also a... 
uh, hospital drama. You know, we, we, we had that with uh, with with um, Doctor Quinn, Medicine Woman, right, right, right? like like uh, like that was two things at the same time. Um, well, superhero is exactly the same way, and we keep seeing this more and more when we look at the superhero movies uh, over the last decade. You have uh, crime drama, and you have comedy, and you have science fiction, and you have fantasy. You have all these different things, and so I just feel like. Like, uh, like, as long as we keep making different things for different kinds of people, uh, the fact that it's superhero is almost secondary, or, or can be secondary, because the idea of the hero is almost universal. Yeah. I mean, because the, the idea of the hero could almost be just the idea of a protagonist. It's yeah, and it's it just right. a, it's a heroic protagonist. And how many of these superhero things end up being now anti-heroes or, like, characters who are resisting the idea of being a hero, we're even playing with that. They're not all, uh, like, 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 like stand-up, stalwart, can-do-no-wrong kinds of characters. And, uh, and I, and I, like, with, with Flash, I'm excited that we're starting to see more variety where that kind of character is starting to seep back in a little bit. So you, you can, you can do that too now. There's still a place for it. You know, you, you, you can still do the character who is just a good guy who isn't constantly, like, like, really conflicted and angsty. But then you've got the really angsty characters too. And you can have, you know, angsty heroes. I'm just saying that I, I think that it's about the quality before it's about, oh no, superheroes are taking over. I, uh, <laughs> Maybe it has something to do, because uh, you look at Hollywood, you look at television, and the thing that scares people the most is originality and the ability to, uh, uh, or, or the uh, the risk of forging something anew. So uh, I think that it's a possibility that you look at comic books, and that's what's going to be just a great source for them to keep plumbing. So, well, you know, maybe maybe Sh Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't working out. Not to say that they're canceling it or anything. Don't get that idea. But I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they say in the future Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't working out. Well, maybe we can make a B-list or Avengers show, and people will get used to that because they love the Avengers, and we introduce stuff in this upcoming Avengers 3 whenever that happens, and we'll make well, a... They're, and they're trying different models there. Yeah. Not to jump off, off of just a, a uh, example that you're using and suddenly start talking about that, but 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 that that is for them that is just a just just a trying out different models. I think what's more likely with them is that they'll they'll uh, the Netflix things are probably going to be more successful and they'll go okay we just don't need regular television. Um, but I guess we'll see what happens with that. But but yes, you're making a lot of sense. So I mean, it's essentially what I'm saying is that uh, at the bottom line, they'll just keep trying other things as opposed to saying, "Well, this comic book thing isn't working out for well, us." Well, maybe anymore. we got lucky. Maybe the idea is with with both movies and TV. Oh, one w with Arrow is like, oh, that was a hit. So every other network is is, is willing to try it now, and there and and so so uh, so what happens is they look maybe the execs look at comics as this kind of more simple okay well that's the genre the genre we're doing now everybody wants stuff based on comics we're doing comics and we're getting lucky because there's so much diverse material to mine from there that they think they're just following a trend but they're actually pushing envelopes on accident and if they, mm -hmm. if they get the right people who understand that then they can get things greenlit and sometimes I wonder if, if this is where innovation sometimes comes from where where, where they, they it, it either comes from not playing it safe or thinking you're playing it safe and actually I, I, I going to something that is just so broad that you inadvertently end up creating something that's never been done before, I mean, maybe, or hasn't been done as much, right? Like, maybe it's kind of like an evolution thing. Yeah, like, we all know we all like Batman, great. And then somebody's like, "Well, let's make a show that's kind of like Batman, where a guy has some tragedy in his past, <laughs> and maybe he could use something like instead of batarangs, you could bow with an arrow or something, right?" And then somebody says, "Well, cool, let's keep on this comic book thing, let's make it darker," and then you get stuff like Constantine and. And uh, so maybe there's kind of an evolution we, here. And, and, and then when we spin off with with uh, with Arrow, um, I'm assuming that's who you were talking about. No. We we, uh, we 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 go we go. Okay, <laughs> what is the opposite of what we're doing right now? What 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 don't like like what don't we have? We don't want to just create Arrow too. So how do we maybe bring in a new audience or uh, keep keep our audience for a second show, but give them something different every week? Oh, I know. We'll go we'll go lighter. You know, and then suddenly we bring in the, the other stuff. So, so I think, like, sometimes I think what's happening is that we're getting some of the variety I've been asking for for different reasons than why I've been wanting it. You know what I mean? Because as a as a viewer, I'm just saying, can I not have post-apocalyptic every time? Can I not have really dark, angsty characters all the time? Can I have good role models? And suddenly, with something like Flash, we, we're getting a good role model, and I think it might just be because, well, we weren't... 
We weren't doing that right then, and we're afraid that we could cause this implosion. I think, and, it, and I also think that it's like a producer versus studio exec thing, where the producers are going to be a little bit smarter about this, maybe, and oh, and hopefully. say, yeah, hopefully, and, and but like they're 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 more in the trenches. They're actually they're actually helping to tell the stories, and they're saying, um, well, uh, and, and of course, their job, producers' jobs are hard because they have to they have to help decide what the stories are going to be while also making it marketable. And so, the, and we talked about this; those two things don't always mesh real well. And so, what 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 they might be doing is saying, uh, well, we can't just keep making the same thing, or this will never work. Uh, now, let me back this off a little bit and say, because obviously, I'm being very positive about this and saying I don't think an implosion happens right away. Um, it, it, it is certainly trends. Trends happen. Things are cyclical. Um, we, people could just get tired of um, guys in tights and stuff uh, uh, over over time. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of what happened with. Like, I'm trying to think of the other side of this. I'm thinking about what happened with, like, space opera. We had so much space opera at the beginning of the 2000s. You know, we still had we still had a Star Trek on. We had Stargate. We had Andromeda there for a while. Um, we had, we had uh, Battlestar Galactica. We had all the... Space opera was kind of owning the airwaves there for a little bit. And in the mid-90s, that was... It was all the rage. I would say that that, uh, that, that superhero movies are starting to take that place where... Um, or, I'm sorry, superhero TV shows are starting to become what space opera was there for a minute. Well, that went away eventually. Why did it go away? Did it go away because we got tired of it, or did it go away because it got kind of stagnant? Uh... And that's a good question. I mean, I, like I can kind of with that one, I can kind of I can kind of see both both ways with it. Um, I wonder if it's almost that people get locked into a franchise, and they uh, they're like, well, it's definitely if, the case with Star Trek. If yeah. I'm going to watch a space opera, I'm going to watch the one I want to watch. And oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Everything they yeah. make has to be spun out of that, and then they have difficulty forging new ground within a particular show or franchise. Yeah, so absolutely. Maybe, maybe that would be the saving grace of superheroes. Is that man? I really like that Arrow universe, and they've spun out three other shows from that, and all three of them are very different shows. Maybe that yeah. would be the saving grace. And maybe you know, like, like, like let's let's get, just because I'm me, let's compare the uh, Arrow thing to um, Star Trek. Okay, well, the thing with Trek is besides Deep Space Nine, there was always a lot of, well, if it's going to be Star Trek, we need to be in space and we need to be going somewhere because that's the premise, that's the idea. Um, we got really lucky we even got Deep Space Nine because the, because the, the, the kind of prevailing idea there for a while from Berman uh, seemed to be, well, it's about going somewhere. We don't want to be in one place. And then... Um, yeah, and, and, and so uh, it was hard to keep coming up with a new premise that wasn't the same show every time. You're not going to have that problem with the Arrow universe because uh, Flash is obviously very different. Um, they, 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 keep, uh, they, they, they keep doing little Easter eggs to Green Lantern things, making people think that they might eventually do a Green Lantern show, uh, which I think would be smart because that would give us the space stuff in this show, and that's one of the big comic things that we haven't really tapped in there yet, um, and then maybe they could even bring in magic for some other kind of show. So, like, th you could do... I mean, it's just like comics. I, I think I think the thing is, y'all already had a shared universe with the comic books. You didn't have this with Star Trek. We're used to these characters all uh, living in the same space, right? So, that's just inherently there already, and they're all very, very different people. So, um, you could have, like, ten shows in that same universe, and none of them would have to seem like the same thing. <laughs> We need to get new blood and not have the same people producing and writing them. Marvel should beat DC to but, the whole uh, core thing and make a Nova Core TV show. Yeah. Okay. I just felt like saying that. Anywho. Uh, but but yeah. So uh, I don't know. Um, I, I, I I'm, I'm gonna. My final thoughts are: it's too early to tell. Yeah. But I think that if it's played right, this could go on for a long time. Yeah. I'm going to say that I don't think that uh, it has to happen. I, I could see a reality in which it could, but uh, if they're smart, they won't let it. And it would be a shame if it did, because it, it doesn't have to. You know, this, I mean, and, and I'm sure some people are, all, are already looking at this and going, oh, God, we're going to have nothing but superhero stuff on TV, but... You know, like like if you're if you're if you're saying that and you don't really uh, you, you know you know know a lot of comic book stuff, um, I would I would suggest like give things a, a shot because there's a lot of variety to be mined and tapped to adapt the stuff to screen. 
And also keep in mind that just because it's comic book doesn't mean it's superhero. And just because it's a comic book focused on a hero of some kind, uh, even an anti-hero, uh, sometimes we have to argue the idea that it's a superhero because they have superpowers, they do some heroic things. But would you really call Constantine a superhero? Yeah, so, yeah. So just because it happens in a way that we're so used to calling them superheroes, that doesn't necessarily mean that the general public will view it as such. Yeah. I mean, I could see people complaining that we're only going to comics for material where it's like, where, where, are, where are the new characters, that sort of thing. Uh, but the nice thing is, comics are not the only place where there's good TV right now. I mean, I think it's important to mention that, too. We A lot of people were calling the last couple of years the new golden age of television before Arrow, before any of this started happening. And so this is just another new place where a lot of re potentially really good stories could be told uh, and really fun, entertaining shows could happen. Um, if this was all we were getting and we weren't getting anything anything cool in other genres, yeah, yeah, we'd have cause for concern, but that's not the case. There's all kinds of decent stuff going on right now. Mad Men, Breaking Bad, Walking Dead. Well, Breaking Bad's done. But <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, Last um, couple years anyway. You know, Beast Motel. I mean, there, there is a lot of really good stuff. I'm really bored with Walking Dead. I haven't watched season four at all. Yeah, and I still haven't tried it because it doesn't seem like my bag. It's the, still only, reading the, comics. It's the only superhero show so far that we're not doing a discussion show. I get, I get questions about it all the time. Uh, when are you going to do Walking Dead discussions? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not my bag. I would almost I would almost need Vince to get a co-host and do it. Like, I like like I, I almost don't want to do that. But, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I put him on the spot. Walking yeah, Dead. You don't, you don't want to do that, do you? See, <laughs> I feel like I would just really upset several people by, by, by me always going... You know what? That's annoying. Nothing's happening right now. Like, season two was so boring, and season three was not good enough for me to consider it a, a reprieve, so that's the thing. Not to say that it's bad. Season three is okay. The whole governor thing was cool. Whatever. But, yeah. <laughs> Vince, <laughs> let's... Let's uh, let's go on a rant, shall we? Do you, yeah. have a, do you have a rant for today? Do have a rant. What would you like to complain about? Besides, are you going to do a Walking Dead rant? Mm, no. Okay. Okay. Walking Dead. I have nothing. To, I just nothing. Walking Dead. Mm. I don't mm. hate it. I don't love it. I you just, nothing it. Okay. Maybe watching this new season that's been posted to Netflix will revigorate my uh, reinvigorate whatever it will, the word it is. It will revigorate. Revigorate. That's yeah. a new word I made up just yeah. for you guys. You just revised the word reinvigorate and made it revigorate. Yep. That's that's my rant. Vince is changing the language. <laughs> Literally. So. Figured. Now. <laughs> What, what's your real rant, Vince? My rant is when I go and I buy a piece of art, generally a print, and the artist wants to sign it for me, I say, thank you, please sign the back. Reason being is that so often they'll have this giant signature sprawled across the front of something they made, and I said, you know, I'm buying the thing that you created because the thing you created is cool. I'm not buying it because it's a collector piece. Uh, and you're not famous. Yeah, likely nobody's going to buy this thing from me because I bought it for me. And um, I, I have. And you uh, personalized it, so my name's on it. Yeah, you know, there's there's one guy who uh, I like what he did. He, he put out this, these line of Ghostbusters uh, prints. He did the four guys. He did uh, Dana Barrett. And he did uh, Lewis Tully. And uh, he also put out a. a uh, what do you call that? Memorial Harold Ramis thing, which was really nice. But uh, so a guy named Bob the artist, and he signed the front of my uh, my Ray one, which I thought was cool because he did the one where Ray had the cigarette hanging out of his mouth, and he signed it, and it almost looks like smoke coming from the cigarette. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, that's cool. And then uh, I'm standing there while my brother's buying the set, and I'm buying the set, and uh, the, the remaining set because I came back next year regretting that I hadn't gotten the others. And he, he starts signing my brothers, and I said, that's cool, I'd like you to sign mine too. Could you sign the back? And he said, sure. I said, as long as that's not like, you know, the way you don't do things or whatever. And he said, I'll sign whatever you want me to sign. And I said, good. Because the, the piece is beautiful. The piece is pretty. Let it speak for itself. I don't need a signature to prove that it's a thing that somebody made and printed and gave to me or that I bought, whatever. So, yep, indeed. Uh, I support having the back of something signed. And also, completely unrelated. When I was... When I was so I'm not Walking Dead. 
When I was a kid, I remember somebody coming up. Walking and, Dead wasn't even out yet. That's what? true. Oh. I was in middle school, and I made this uh, this still life, and I thought, wow, this is this is probably the best thing I've done so far in my short life. And uh, and then you signed it on the back. And then somebody thought it would be a cool thing to come up and re like really scratch my name into the front of my my still oh. life. And uh, he tried to make it look nice. And I came in the next day. I went, what in the world did you do? And he said. I thought you should have your name on the front. And I went, but it's an art piece. What are you doing? And then he and, and it's I not a signature because you did it. Yeah, well, this is stupid. That's stupid. And then I slapped that guy in the back of the head. What his face he, bounced off the table. What was he thinking? And then he signed his head. Yep. Actually, I did slap that guy. Yeah. He, he and I got into a, uh, a heated I argument. I would have also slapped that guy and I with my thinking. We were sitting anger. at the table, and he said something that just ticked me off, and I went bop right in the back of his head. And what I thought was going to happen was I was going to go, oh, how dare you, like uh, like challenge you to a duel. But apparently... That's not what happened, eh? I was a very stout kid, and I hit him, and he went... Wham! Right off the table in front of him. This isn't related to anything in this video. But his face smashes into the table as glasses come flying off, and the teacher comes over and she says, Hey! And I went, Whoa! Sorry! I did not mean to smash his face into the table. <laughs> but I did mean to hit him. And she said, Okay! And then walked away. <laughs> really? Yeah. And, uh, I thought this was gonna. I thought this was gonna start as a slightly related story about a guy writing your name on something because yep, of the whole signature started. thing. But I thought it was gonna turn into, and that's the time I accidentally killed a man. <laughs> no, he survived. The, uh, the teacher. The teacher <laughs> said, "Are you okay?" To I, love, I love. I love. It sounds potentially traumatic enough that I can buy that description. No, he survived. <laughs> the teacher said to him, "She didn't say okay and then walk away. She said okay." And then she looked at the kid and said, are you all right? And he said, yeah, I just want to make sure my glasses aren't broken. And then he puts his glasses back on his head. And uh, he said, they're a little bent. I'm like, you shouldn't have done that, you <laughs> jerk. Should have said that either, whatever he said. That got me so wow. heated. That You're point. so physical, man. Yeah, you know, that's the thing is that I rarely, have, rarely level. I rarely ever get physical with somebody. But when I was that, that age, I was just dumb and, like, you know, all kids. <laughs> You're... You're not nearly as smart as you will be. That's what I'm saying. And unless Alzheimer's sets oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you will get smarter. Yep. You know. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's fair. But yeah, indeed. So there's a little story from my personal life. Sam, I still kind of feel bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he's watching. I'm sure the guy that you almost killed in high school is watching Geek Pollution. Nice. He's a cool guy. <laughs> is he? Oh, are you, are, you, are you still friends? Yeah. Yeah? Does he, does he watch the channel? I don't know. I doubt it. Oh, but you should send him this video and be like, I was talking about you. That's fair. I'll do that. Yeah. I think he's still in the military. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, I all can right. still take him. So, Bring it on, Sam. <laughs> today my rant is very simple. I can't work in public anymore. It drives me crazy. I used to go to a lot of coffee shops and restaurants and things, and I would and I would bring my writing, and I and I did a lot of my writing of Spawn Year in, in places like that. People pestering you for autographs. Oh yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah, no, <laughs> but I, I, uh, I. There was one time, but I was just eating. I wasn't even. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I. I almost, I almost directly to the camera asked a question. Do you guys? So do you? So did later. you guys? Have you guys heard the story about uh, the kid that walked up to me at a Taco Bell? Have you Have you heard the story? No. Mm. Oh, these people are so they're so quiet. Well, <laughs> anyway, I, I, so so there, there was there was there was a kid at a Taco Bell a few weeks ago that that, 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 that came up to me and he, yeah 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 stop the video you, you have the power you have the power. <laughs> so, but, but somebody said up to the cry skull somebody came up to me at a Taco Bell and uh, this this kid I, I know I've told this story I'm gonna tell it again and and, and he goes just because you said that uh, uh, but I wasn't working that day this is another new my rant and he was like and he was like uh, hey are, are, are you uh, are you on YouTube he he seemed kind of nervous he was like are you on on YouTube I was like yeah he said are you Captain Logan? I was like, yeah. I shook his hand. He was like, okay, thanks. And then he went back and he started eating these tacos. <laughs> and I was, I was, I was like, I was like, I, I was thinking, well, you could like sit down and talk for a second if you want to. Anyway, um, uh, he messaged me uh, I, the, the next day and was like, it was like, I saw you in public. It was awesome. It's me, the guy, the, the kid at the Taco Bell. Anyway, so that that is not the reason that I can't work in public. That does not. I do not have adoring fans that are constantly coming up to me, Vince, in public and like, rubbing their faces on his shoulder. No, it does. It doesn't happen. But. I uh, what does happen is we have and this is related to our topic for today uh, we are so 
uh, superhero conscious now. There's a phrase I never thought I'd say. <laughs> I, I, like, 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 superheroes are so in, comics are so in, that I can't go anywhere without hearing people talking about superheroes. And it is distracting. Because it's what I it's it's what I do. I spend twenty four seven. My life is 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 superheroes and pop culture, and I'm. And so 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 like so like I, I the other day I was at a coffee shop, and this is just one of many examples. I was at a coffee shop, and I was trying to write, and I was only there about ten or fifteen minutes because. Uh, right next to me were these were these uh, couple of guys um, speaking loud enough that I could hear the whole conversation. It was just impossible not to think about what they were saying and and, and, and to work because when people start talking about things that I this is not a this is not a like a like irritating fanboy thing of I know the topic better than you so I want to like jump in and correct you or something. It's that they're saying things I have an opinion about and I, and like. They're right there, and well, and, and it's not even that I really want to jump in and talk to them about it. It's just that now I'm just thinking about that, and so th- they were talking about how uh, boring Superman is because he's too powerful, and I was like, oh, I can't work on Spawn Year while you're over here dissing Superman. <laughs> oh, you know, I really, really want to jump into conversation. Sometimes. Have you have you had this? I I bit my lip and walked away because I was about to call a guy an idiot. And uh, <laughs> this is the difference between me and Vince. At no point did I consider calling this guy, guy an, idiot, an idiot, nor was I going to smack him or sign his, his the back of his head. Uh, <laughs> this guy that I almost called an idiot once. I was walking through a Hastings for those of you who are in the Midwestern area, Hastings. Yeah. So uh, it's 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 one it's one of the few bookstores that survived the apocalypse. Indeed, bookstore, comic store, movie store, game store. Well, thank God there are other things that's yeah. part of the reason they survived the apocalypse. And what they call trends. So. <laughs> Trends. In other words, trinkets, games, and whatnot. So, uh, action figures, who'd hot. So they, they sell Twitter feeds of the last hour? Yes. Oh, okay. Trinket. <laughs> trinket. No, you said trends. Oh, trends, I got you. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm walking through a Hastings, and I see this guy... Oh, with... you know what? Only you can pull that off. <laughs> that, is a, that is a consummate Vince thing. Like, he picks up a piece of paper, he does this amazing twirl thing... <laughs> And like, nobody else can pull that off. Anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm walking through a Hastings, and I see this guy, this big burly dude, and three other guys standing around him going, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. And this big burly dude, he's pointing at the Were assassination. Were they all Gaston from Beauty and the Peas? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and big burly muscle, blah, 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 blah. So, those are the words, I'm pretty sure. And, uh... <laughs> So he's he's pointing and he's pointing at this movie and he's getting really heated about it and he's saying this movie sucked. There was nothing good in this movie. This is the this is a western and all they do is talk. He's pointing at the oh, assassination no. of Jesse James. Oh no! And I I went, it, it's, and then I walked away because I, I like literally bit my tongue and walked away because I did this, <laughs> and I walked away thinking it's a drama. It's it's a drama. How can you tell me that you expect an action movie to be, or a drama to be an action movie? You're an idiot. Well, you could be both. Yeah, that's fair. But, but it's not. It, it wasn't. And <laughs> yeah. And so if it's a good drama and it's not coming out and say, "Look at me, I'm an action movie," but that means that guy wanted an action movie. Okay, go watch an action movie. Yeah, fine. Go watch something different. Go watch uh, Unforgiven or something, which is more of a drama so what, and an action movie, but still. So what Vince actually did was he looked at that guy doing like this. And then he walked away. What he would have done had he been holding a sticky note is this. See, I can't, I can't do it. Nobody can pull this off. It's not Vince. See, and then it's not even on. The other thing that's amazing about you is that every time you do it, it gets in the frame. Like, see? <laughs> Why are you the? Well, I feel like I need somebody to teach me how to do this. You know, it's like. Oh, didn't get it that way. It's like. Yeah, it's like using chopsticks or uh, like, like, like. Like getting good at like frisbee toss or something like 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 I can't I can't do that anyway. All right, whatever. <laughs> That's funny. Frisbee toss. I just mean frisbee. You know, like. I'm not that good at throwing frisbees. Anyway, uh, well, that's it for us today, everybody. Thanks as always for watching Geeks Not Heroes. Hope you enjoyed it. Um. We'll be with you again next week. If there is something you'd like us to talk about in a future video, please leave a comment. You can also go to geekvolution.com, go to the contact page, and you can send topics through the contact form there. And we'd like to know what you think about this. Are we looking at a superhero TV or movie implosion? What do you think? Leave your comments. We had a good time. Hope you did, too. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince, reminding you to support your local comic book store. See you later.